coming to you straight from the Rio Grande and beyond and beyond broadcasting to the four corners of the globe so grab your seat your coffee or your sundowner okay everybody here we go on point as always this is gloves off gloves off we're back at you and gloves off i'm paul withdrawn and we have an excellent guest an icon in the martial arts in the east coast of, of the United States. It's Sensei Donna Kinsella Keaton. And we're going to touch a base on martial arts in general, martial arts for women, why she picked this, and what a um, beautiful lifestyle it really is. Of, a lot of people need to get in, enjoy more of it. How are we doing? We're doing good? I'm doing fine. How are you, sir? How's everything good, good. going? Hi. Don't call me, sir. Call me Paul. It's fine. Okay. Paul, oh. <laughs> how's everything in Florida? I live in, in Cape May, New Jersey, near Atlantic City. Oh, now New Jersey. Okay. Yes. And, in, in New Jersey. And um, how, how, is, how is it right now? Is it, is it pretty, pretty calm, everything with, the, with COVID, or is it coming back up? Or it, what's going it, on? It, sadly, it came back up again. And, uh, you know, now that the summer season's over, the vacationers are starting to go. Things are starting to close up. The restaurants, the the boardwalk in Wildwood, Wildwood would stay open another month, and then everything closes down. Uh, but it's beautiful down here. Absolutely gorgeous. Wonderful place. Uh, everything's fine, but the COVID is coming back. Is it, that's the, what happened here. We started, yeah. we started back. We started building back up the school, and we lost so many within mm -hmm. a month because of the, the fear and the fear mongering more than anything else. Yes. And yes. then, unfortunately, there is a, vi a virus. We have to be in safety, but I, it's this fear that they're in placing in the media, and people are just scared. And and it's kind of like more of a sense of bullying more than anything else. It is. I, I agree with 100%, Paul. I agree. It's more like, you know, everybody's so afraid to go anywhere. They're afraid to go to the restaurants, which causes the restaurants to lose business. And it's sad. It's sad because we were known as one of the top vacation areas in New Jersey besides Atlantic City. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Well, let, let's touch base on how did you get involved in martial arts? How did you start? Because everybody usually has a path. Sometimes you learn when you're a kid, sometimes when you're in college, sometimes when you get married. It just it grabs people at different times of their life. Tell me a little bit about how it, how it happened with you. Well, I had a business for 12 years, a nail salon. And my parents were in their 80s, and they decided to build an apartment next to me. And I gave up my business to take care of my parents. And uh, I happened to go through the phone book to check out something for my parents. And I came across Short Kick Karate. I says, you know what? I'm going to do that now that I'm not, I don't have my nail salon anymore. So I went over and I kind of shocked the owner. He says, how old are you? I says, I'm 55. He says, okay, I can give you, we have two classes. We have Nihon Goshin Aikido, NGA, or Goju Karate. I says, okay, I'll try the Nihon Goshin Aikido, which I did very well in. I did very well in it. So I said, is there any way I could take up the Goju Karate, because down here in Cape May, were, many people were known to be from Goju Karate. So he says, well, if you want to, okay. And I went in, I talked to the, the instructor, and he said to me, just because you're 55 doesn't mean I'm going to treat you any different. And I says, I don't want you to. I want you to treat me just like you're treating everybody else. And... I started to have this passion all of a sudden and my friends and my parents and my sisters and my brothers were all against it. I said, why? Why are you against me taking martial arts? You're too old. No, I'm not. I'm not too old. I'm going to do this. And uh, when I started to get into the Gojo, I kind of surprised the teacher. He was shocked how good I was. I was fast. I was thin, I was only 120 pounds. And he said to me, would you like to start competing? And I says, definitely, 
you know, and I started the competing, which I fell in love with. And sadly, my parent, my dad died. He never got to see me uh, do competition. And I said to my um, teacher, please, anything that comes up, please let me go. And most of the, my tournaments were in Atlantic City, like the Battle of the Taj Mahal. Um, I did all of them. And I, I can honestly say for an older woman, I never lost a tournament. I always came in first, second, or third. And I, I started to go in classes at five o'clock. My class wasn't until eight o'clock. And my teacher came up to me and says, why are you here? I said, because I want to learn how to teach. I want to learn how to teach women self-defense. And he said, great. So I started five o'clock and I watched him do the children and then the teenagers, then the adults. And I did my class. And then right after my class, I went into the Nihon Goshen Aikido. And thank God I did. Uh, I became a black belt. And my, the owner of the dojo wind up with a brain disease called um, FTD. And he had to leave. And I took over the school. And thank God I did because his wife needed money and I, I kept the school going for two years. And, you know, um, I had another grandmaster that helped me. And sadly, my mother passed. And I had a 10th degree black belt that trained in Okinawa while he was in um, the Marines. And he just came back from Okinawa and he said to me, can I rent your parents' apartment since your mother has passed? So I did. And he taught me every day. So I had lessons every day but Sunday. And plus, I still went to school at night. So I was very lucky. I was extremely lucky. And... I did go around to other high schools, you know, with uh, one of my instructors, and we would talk to the kids in the high school about being bullied. Um, you know, this is in Atlantic City. We, we would tell them, please, you know, don't put up with it. They loved it. The children loved it. And then I asked them, how many of you, of you, of these students ever got bullied? Well, everybody's hand came up. And it's like, you have to take up martial arts. And this is what I try to tell my friends, my women, the women that I used to do, you know, that were my clients, do it for yourself. It's fun. You know, we call each other warrior sisters and I have plenty of them on Facebook and we share our experience back and forth, how great it is. I mean, I was so honored by the people that I met down here that was into Goju Bro. And um, I also in the book of Who's Who two times. I was very honored and I met, um, let me see, let me get this. I met Joan Ree. I don't know if you could see that. And of course, I know Joe Corley, I know Jeff Smith, and I know Superfoot Wallace. And it was an honor to be in that book. And then I was in another book again after that. And I go to the Hall of Honors every year because my teachers went, my instructors went, and I'm also in this book too. I don't know if you could see Beautiful. it. Beautiful. And it's got, it's got my bio in it. And it, you know, people see, wow, she started at 55 years old. And uh, it's exciting. And I think every woman, you know, I should couldn't know agree you. with you. Most. I think women, excuse me for interrupting, I think okay. women need to learn martial arts more than more than men. And um, it just the benefits are more than, than than than, you know, one can say, you know, this is what you're going to get. The, the benefits are so much. Number one mm -hmm. is the self-confidence. Oh, definitely. Self-esteem. OK. And um, you see that and you see that with with you. What? Everything you touched on that you, you said, I couldn't agree with you most. You know, mm -hmm. kids need it for bullying. Of course they do. You know, I tell, I tell folks this. Uh, they call all the time. They say, you know, um, my son's being bullied or my daughter's being bullied. Okay. 
and but she does football and she or they do cheerleading and he does football and does basketball and she does volleyball and the bullies follow her everywhere of course the bullies yeah. in the school are going to go do football and basketball yes and, I agree I mean, they're, they're going to continue going you have to get them <laughs> off that niche right somewhere else for them to start training exactly. and they say well aren't the bullies going to train of course they are don't you think they're not training <laughs> I, go, I go the majority the majority of people that do martial arts it's outstanding outsta uh, standing in the numbers okay mm -hmm. especially kids exactly you know at one point in time most kids as they say 80 percent of our children have done martial arts yes 80 percent i think it's a little bit more I think it's a little bit more. And if you look at, at uh, the sense of how many people actually do martial arts, I think you're looking more about the 90s, 90% in the United States. Why? Yeah. Everybody that went to the service had to learn. So they've been trained at one form or another. They've trained, whether some of them took it past 10 years, whether some of them took it past six months. They've all touched base on it. On it. And they got something. People, they got something out of it and it's unfortunate you know and people want to uh I, I i argue this with a lot of our, our colleagues is that they say no it's because martial arts only the good guys come in it really i know a lot of i know a lot of bad guys that are in the underworld that right. they do martial <laughs> arts as well and you're like and they're yes. fairly good and that's why they do it you know and that's why they do it correct yes and, they, and, and so you have to be one step ahead you know that unfortunately yes goju Wu is a beautiful style it's a beautiful oh, it is. System. and a lot of people it's it's great and i know that in the east coast very very popular and yes. also in the west coast yeah in dallas there used to be a, a goju school very good great folks that came out of there good guys a lot of good guys i i was lucky um uh, Peter Urban um, was in New York, and uh, his first black belt, um, Shihan Eddie Varankin, lives a blue the next town over, and he used to come in our dojo. And <laughs> he saw me sparring one of the men, and I had my helmet on, and he came around the mat, and at this time I didn't know who he was, and he was all excited and. He, he was like, you know, throwing his fist up and big smile on his face. And when I took my helmet off, my the owner of the school said, what did, what did uh, Shihan Edward Varankin say to you? And I just like looked at him and I said, that was Shihan Eddie Varankin? He said, yeah, he loved the way you fight. He goes, I told him you were 57 years old. <laughs> and um, he also passed and he gave me my first certificate. I don't know if you could say it. It's right there. And it, that was from Shihan Eddie Varankin and the patch, which I proudly wear. And it's just an exciting thing for him to see women, you know, and my teacher was just like, wow, he says, I can't believe it. You're, you're not only older, but you're wiser because you walk with, with confidence, you walk with awareness. I said, I always did growing up in the city of Philadelphia. You know, my, my surroundings were always, the, you know, around me. And this is what I used to tell my, my clients when I used to have my nail salon. Always walk with confidence because they're not looking for a, a strong woman to attack. They're looking for the weak woman. And don't be that weak woman. It's very important to walk with confidence, awareness, stay off the cell phone, keep your distance, keep your hands and watch your car, especially your car. Uh, know what's around your car before you even go near it. Because I did have an incident once where a woman came up to my car and I said, get your hands off your, my car now. And my voice scared her, which she wasn't prepared for. And that's the thing. They're not prepared they're not um, ready for somebody to come back after them. And this is what I used to tell the women. They're not ready for a battle. They're ready. They want somebody that's weak. And don't be that weak person. You know. Absolutely.
Yeah, I think it's very, very good for women. And I think now that women are starting to get into it, it's great. It's just, I had a great experience. I felt like I left a wonderful mark on my life. Now that I'm almost 70, I feel like, wow, I did something. Did something not only for me, but for the women. Absolutely. It's a, it's a great honor. Absolutely. Yes. You know, you mentioned one key point and key word that people forget, period of self-defense in martial arts called awareness. Mm -hmm. Without it, I don't care how many black belts you have, it's not gonna work. So you have to understand that you have to be aware of your surroundings, be aware of your distance, be aware of everything that's around you at all times. Times. Mm -hmm. At all times. And people need to forget that, you know. We live in a world that's violent, even though some people wanna live in a bubble. It's a violent <laughs> world out there, you know? A lot, of, a lot of things happen with you going to the grocery store. And it can happen in a very short period of time. What is it? Within three miles from your house, they say all, all accidents occur. And, uh, and uh, um, so when that, with that being said, we have to teach our, our students, our kids, our young ladies, our young our lads, mm -hmm. and, and of course our men and women, that it's the most important thing it's awareness awareness, awareness. Of where you're at mm -hmm. even yeah. going to your car you should be aware while you're looking at your car is there anybody hiding behind it is the i'm um, parked next to a big van or this big van parked next to me and that's exactly what happened i was parked next to a van and all of a sudden i saw a woman a woman uh, saying to me, uh, open your window, open your window. I knew not to open, turn, you know, to turn my window down. I knew it. I said, get your hands off my car. When I looked in my re uh, rear view mirror, there was a guy standing behind my car. It was a setup. Of course. You know what I did? Boom, I put it in reverse. I put it in reverse and he's saying, I'm security, I'm security. Well, I went back to the dojo. I told my uh, owner about it, the owner of the dojo. And he said, there's no security here. You were set up. So there's another thing you have to be aware of. Where are you going? When you walk into a store, be aware. You don't know if something's happening in, in that store. And that's what's happening today. People are getting, stores are getting robbed left and right. And you don't want to walk into the middle of a conflict. So you have to be aware of everything. Absolutely. You have to, in everything that you do. And I think that's what, what martial arts teaches us. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people say, oh, we're doing self-defense techniques. Well, that's what it's for. It's to gear mm -hmm. us to what, what might happen. Are you exactly. going to come out unscathed no you're not you might get to come out with a black guy but at least you went home that's you might, right you know what i'm saying so something mm -hmm. happens it's not the movies that you know you come out shining you, you you go in and you come out with your boot, boot, boots polish you know like in some of the movies <laughs> that are out there and you're like you know they come out cleaner after the fight and you're like really exactly but uh we need to understand that now let's yeah. talk about competition what has competition mm -hmm. taught you? What did you like about the competition? What, what, what are those things? Well, I did all my, basically most of my competitions were in Atlantic City, the big ones, uh, Battle of the Taj, um, many of them. And my, I, I always felt nervous because being in my fifties, there wasn't too many people to compete against. And I said, find me somebody, I don't care. So uh, I was at uh, the Atlantic City um, Convention Center and my teacher said, Would, are you willing to fight and, sp and do a uh, form with a brown belt and a black belt? I said, of course, I was only a yellow belt. Why not? It's mm -hmm. fun. Well, I did my forms and of course I won because I was a dancer and I had that flow about me. And then it came down to sparring. Now I had to spar the brown belt first and then I had to go to the black belt. Well, 
she was probably in her 40s. I was 57 at the time. It was my birthday. And I won. I won the grand championship. And here I am with this six-foot trophy and a big belt. It just made my whole life just sparkle up, you know. And then I said, when's the next one? Okay, you're going to the battle at the Taj Mahal. Fine. I says, lovely. I went. The girl saw me do my forms and says, I'm not fighting her. <laughs> so I said, please, I said to her, I'm a lot older than you. Get the confidence. Let's go. I, try, I actually talked to my, the girl that I was supposed to spar, but she refused it. And that hurt me because I tried to talk to her. Don't be afraid. Go do it. Just do it. Even if you lose, you're there. It's something you could talk about. And, and then I just went on with all my competitions. And I have a trophy room that is full and a lot of certificates. And that means a lot to me. It means a lot to me. And uh, I try to get women. And I want to get back into strictly teaching women i love teaching children you've got to have a lot of patience to teach children and but the main thing was women because having the nail salon i heard so many stories and the competitions to me were fantastic i loved every single one of them and matter of fact we had one that was the west coast versus the east coast at at the wildwood convention center and I took my students and the, uh, the, the guy who was running it said to me, are you a martial artist? So you have a black belt? I says, yeah, I'm here for my students. He said to me, do you mind uh, joining in? And I said, no, not at all. I says, the, I, I could do a, a form for you. And I did my form. I did empty ha, which is my winning kata. And the judges looked at me. And they said, well, you take uh, Aikido also. I said, yeah, I could do a front roll and land up on, with a, on a catch stance. He said, no way. And I did the front roll and I landed up on a catch stance and he was shocked. He said, I never saw anybody do that. So I won this beautiful crystal trophy with the, the thing. And I have that in my cabinet here in my living room. And I was so honored, and so was the guy from California who held this tournament. He says, I can't believe it. He says, how old are you? Right in front, and I'm on stage. And I and do you mind if we tell everybody how old you are since you did that front roll coming up in the cat stand? So I says, I'm 64. And he was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I says, I'm 64 years old. And that gave women... The, ins the mothers that were there for the tournament, they were like, yeah, yeah. And it, it's fun. It's a lot of fun seeing other women and men and young on their belts see this. It was just fantastic. And that was my last one. Well, we're proud of you for showing, showing that energy and showing that. Yes. And it's, and it's something that Thank has you. to be preserved. And you, you all, all the women that, that do martial arts, you all are... You know, the pioneers already came, but you all are the, the ambassadors of the martial arts, really. Yes. Yes. That's basically what it is. It doesn't matter what style. Uh, so, uh, when you see a woman doing, it doesn't matter whether it's Wing Chun, Capoeira, Taekwondo, Savat. Yeah. As soon as you see them doing it, you understand that they're an ambassador That's of that right. culture, of mm -hmm. that country, of uh, yeah. the martial arts in general for all. Yes, and uh, it's and great to, to see. Preserve that. Yes, we do, and it's and I love watching them eat. No matter what style, you always learn. You watch and learn, no matter what style, and I really enjoy it. And I wish this virus will get over with very shortly, so I can start getting into helping teach to teach women at my local church, and. Uh, my teacher happens to be the, the the priest there, and I told him, I said, why can't we use the church to teach women self-defense? And he said, once the virus is over, we might do that. And I said, that would be great, because I'd like to get back into it again, you know, start teaching women the confidence, the, the glory that, you know, you, you don't have to be heavy or, or too old, or you could be anything. You have... 
you're a person, you're a living being, try it. Have fun. Give it a go. It's great. It really is great. I love it. Absolutely. I really love it. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, uh, we, I, we enjoy our conversations since you and I, we've become friends in the, in the last couple of years. And, uh, and yes. it's something that people need to understand that in the martial arts, it's a big family. Everybody kind of knows each other. Yes. One way or another, it's going to happen. You know, people say, you know what, I'm, I'm, where are you at? My brother-in-law lives in Dallas and his son needs to go to martial arts school. Well, where in Dallas? There's, mm -hmm. there's folks out there in Dallas that are friends of ours, associates of ours, yes. one way or another. Help them out. That's the way you can do it. And, and the other thing that COVID has destroyed is a lot of martial arts schools. A lot of martial arts schools aren't going to come back. They're not going to be, they're not going to be opening again. Done. A mm -hmm. lot of the old timers lost their students, lost the way of opening it. A lot of these old icon schools that were there for the community they are no longer. So we need to understand that. Gotcha. And, uh, yeah. and people, and people need to uh, understand that a lot of these martial arts schools have given youngsters that are now men and women in their different communities the advantage to fight against peer pressure so now you have good citizens in society maybe you do not have the the champion world champion or the champion karate tournament fighter or, or the black belts that continue teaching but you touch the hearts of many and gave them a direction for them to at least stand up and say no not today that's and right uh, they're great then those schools are not there anymore it's sad no they're not they're not there and sadly the last school that was open closed about a year ago and it broke my heart and he had such a beautiful school and it's done i mean everybody's done and it's like you know that's why i i asked uh, uh reverend um my pastor let's have it at the church you have enough room there and he he agreed and he says when once the COVID ends maybe we'll think of something and have it at the church for the women Absolutely. and the, the young children who are going to school or if they're going to school and to give them this activity and learn to love one another you know we're, we're like family i mean i go to the hall of honors for the last 13 years we're all family and we treat each other like family with respect and honesty. And that's what I like. And if you, if the children today have this little bit of martial arts in school, like the high schools, this might bring unity to, to each other without bullying. So there's so much bullying going on in the high schools. It's, it's sad. It's very sad. So this is what we're trying to get together. I'm, t I'm going to touch base on bullying. And I say this, I think, you know, and I'm going to, I'm going to use the, the two, next term conspiracy. I think that's the biggest conspiracy there is when they, they say, we care about those that are being bullied. I have yet to see a high school actually do what they're supposed to do with bullying. I know. You Isn't know, here in, Texas, here in Texas, if your child is being bullied, the bully, the bully, is removed and moved to another school in the district. They don't do that I, here. They move the child that was being bullied out. I know. And yeah. that's not the way it's supposed to be. And, and people need to understand that. And uh, we had an incident in Laredo last week. Let me tell you about it. You know, when I saw the video, and if I have it, I'll, I'll put it up here. If I have the video, I'll, 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 I'll share it in this incident. Sure. Because it's a very graphic video. Uh, you, you see a football player. The jersey in the high school and some other kid and the kid basically knives a football player sticks <gasps> him with a knife in the gut you see the and when i saw that i said 100 bucks the football player was bullying that other kid and that kid said said not today and he pulled out a knife and he stuck him with it oh, oh how, can you, how can you think that way that's not you're always thinking in this fashion that's not what happened well guess what Yesterday came out in the newspaper 
<laughs> that the, the football player was 18 years old. The other kid was 16, was being bullied since two years previous. The mom came out and said, the school doesn't do anything about it. The kid got tired, <laughs> got a knife, and stuck him. <gasps> he went to the extreme of being bullied. The kid said, not today, and he defended himself. Mm -hmm. But if they would have done something about the bullying last Bully year, before. that mm -hmm. would have not happened. So this it would have is never the happened. school's fault. It's not the kid's fault. That's what I, my opinion. I that agree with you. I but agree with you. This occurred because of the school, not because of the kid. The kid had to defend himself. Yes. You know, and when, sadly, you're 16, when you're 16 and you're looking up at an 18-year-old, that's fear. When you're 15, you're looking up at a 17-year-old, that's fear. It's kind of like a 10-year-old looking up against a, a 12 and 13. Yet, you know, there's that age difference. It mm -hmm. changes once we go into college when you're 18, 19, the guy's 21, 22. It's a different story. It is but a different at, story. In high school, there's that age fear factor mm -hmm. that's still around. And, and I have seen it. Like I said, I went there with my, uh, my teacher and we were at doing an expo for um, career day. Mm -hmm. And here I am in front of all these high school kids and I'm, telling them about martial arts and I had my trophies up I had my and I said how many of how many children here or students were ever bullied well everybody's hand went up it was like oh wow I couldn't believe it so I feel like in high school they should have they have gym have a little bit of self-defense in that you know I, I I really believe they should put even if it's 15 minutes you know, they have Jim put a little bit of defense in there. Uh, that's how I feel. You know, I mean, and I get it. We live in a world that you're not going to like everybody. You're not going to, but you have to deal with everybody. There's a difference. Yes. I might not like you, but I might have to deal with you. Mm -hmm. So we can be cordial mm -hmm. about it and, and and get this thing done if we have to. Exactly, I you know, agree. In the work environment, you go to work, and guess what? You don't like everybody at work, but you have sure. to deal with them. Every for the day. Better, for the betterment of the business that you all are working for, mm -hmm. for the betterment of your own work. Exactly, exactly. But, you know, so martial arts helps that. Yes. Helps you to it helps them to grow. Mm -hmm. It helps them to grow when they go into college. It helps them when they get their job to understand, to have respect for that person. You give, you get back. And, you know, there, there was times when I, when I lived in Philly, uh, women didn't like me because I guess, you know, they, I was 17, 18 years old when I started working and it, if I knew they didn't like me, but I found a way for them to like me. I learned how to do that. Like, oh, that's a beautiful dress you're wearing. Or, and women kind of like that. They kind of like to hear a compliment from another woman. So I was never bullied, but I seen other people get bullied. And I was not going to be ever, ever bullied in my life. And when I went out into the working field in Philadelphia and I know people didn't like me the women didn't like me you know so I figured well there's only one way to handle this make them like me and in today's world it's not going to happen it's absolutely. not going to happen in today's world absolutely you know there are different type of people today um I don't know whether it's the generation coming up but um Thank God my daughter's almost 50 and she had a deal with bullying and she took care of it. I said, take care of it right there on the spot. And even at work, she worked for a couple of restaurants down here and she said, well, this one did that. She got my table. I said, Donna, don't go and complain to the owner. He's got enough problems. Deal with it yourself. Talk to the girl and say, you know, you wouldn't like it if I did it to you. Be respectful and you'll get respect back. And they become your best friends. And if they don't become your best friends now, 
give it a few years. You'll see them again. We're a small town. They'll, they'll give you the respect you deserve. And my, she's very well loved, my daughter. And I appreciate that. She's very well loved. So, yeah. You know, what you said, it's, it's, it's the truth. It's the truth. And folks out there, if you guys are listening, there's nothing but pearls in, with Sensei. What she's talking about, about the attitude of what martial arts do. Everything she says is 100% true. Yes. And, um, well, you know, we've run out of time. We can continue yes. going on. I love talking to you. And I love talking we'll, to you, Paul. We will see you soon. That And yep. uh, let, let this uh, COVID pass us by, and we'll, we'll see you either over there or, or you over in, in Texas. But we'll see you soon. And for folks okay. out there, if you have if you have a question for about martial arts and why if you're a woman if if I should do it or not, give us give us a call. Send me an email. Numbers. My email is very simple. It's we thrown academy at twenty twelve at gmail dot com. That's we thrown academy twenty twelve at gmail dot com. Leave a question, and if you do want to talk to uh, Sensei Donna and ask her some questions, send them to me. I'll connect you with her. And uh, sure. Sure. I'd we'll love yeah. to. Thank you, Paul. Yes. Yes. Well, and Sensei, thank you for having me on. It was such an honor, finally. <laughs> and uh, sending you much love and honor. And please be careful. Be safe. And everyone, please be safe and careful. And just be aware. Awareness is very important. Absolutely. Folks, until next time, you all stay safe, be safe, and we'll touch base soon. Uh, also, press like and share. That's what needs to happen. We want to thank you because there's a lot of content out there and uh, you all choose us to watch and we're very thankful. Until next time, much peace. Thanks.